Hello everyone, so in my last video I spoke about having a much more detailed look at AMD and their AI offering, especially MI300 and how much money that will be able to make for the company in let's say 2024. So the main stopper in this place is basically TSMC and their manufacturing capacity for the Kovos manufacturing lines. And we know that based on industries insiders like uh, Dylan Patel and uh, others, we can we know that the current uh, capacity of Taiwan Semiconductor Scovos is uh, roughly at 8,000 wafers per month. And this is basically in the summer of 2023. Now, going forwards onto the end of this year, the rumors or the industry insiders are saying that that capacity will be increased to let's say 11,000 to maybe even 12 and 13,000 wafers per month. And uh, the goal is to double that by end of next year, 2024. And I've seen also some data that uh, it could possibly be all the way up to 32,000 wafers per month. But let's say if we meet in the middle and yeah, let's say at the minimum at least 24,000 is the goal for uh, TSMC's capacity next year. Based on those numbers, so based on the minimum capacity of let's say 8,000 and then 11,000 end of this year we see that Nvidia is definitely hitting the road running quickly right now and they are definitely dominating the market I mean this secret hasn't gone past anyone and Nvidia is definitely dominating that market right now and we know that uh, if we are assuming I mean these numbers are my own estimates based on the industry, industry insiders and yeah of course these are probably not quite uh, true but I guess we are at least hopefully in the right ballpark so anyways we can see that my assumptions is that Nvidia has 4000 wafers give or take by this summer and uh, 6000 by end of the year and 12000 by end of next year and these numbers are based on the yeah as I said industry insiders and data that is available on the market we can see there are like uh, some articles from Tom's hardware about uh, Nvidia and AMD consuming the lion's share of the TSMC Cobos capacity and I've spoken about this in my previous video but the only thing you should take away from this basically article is that uh, from those uh, numbers that you'll see on this uh, row here probably yeah I guess at least 50% of them will go to Nvidia and then according to the industry insiders an AMD share once ramping up so again we are probably 6 to 12 months later than Nvidia in that sense but once an AMD hits the road running the industry insiders are saying that uh, we should expect anywhere between let's say 40% to 50% of Nvidia's uh, wafer allocation so as you can see my assumptions for the summer this year is very low for AMD just only let's say 50 wafers just for basically having something to show to your potential customers for the future and taking these numbers we can see that the possible number of chips I've calculated that uh, H100 from Nvidia will be in above of 100,000 units which to be honest is not that uh, unrealistic in my opinion reading the articles coming out uh, recently we can see that most likely it's somewhere around let's say 100,000 give or take uh, a couple of thousand cylinder in my opinion and again AMD's number is just slow because yeah they are simply haven't hit the volume production in my opinion but before we continue on the uh, number of chips that each company will sell let's have a look how I arrived at that numbers or at those numbers and uh, this is actually quite straightforward so I know that the wafers uh, roughly cost this this much at least this is the assumption but not, that's not the main part here. The only thing that you should know that um, the H100 from Nvidia is based on the 4 nanometer uh, silicon and um, AMD's uh, MI300 is actually based on a um, hybrid of uh, 5 nanometer and 6 nanometer chips. And this is basically due to the packaging, but we don't need to go into the more detail about that. The only thing you should know that uh, Nvidia is using a monolithic design and uh, yeah, AMD is packaging a couple of different uh, dies together. Um, there's obviously a bit more engineering going into that, but uh, yeah, other than that, you shouldn't focus too much about that. So the main, main interesting difference here is actually the die size. We know that uh, according to Nvidia's own data, 
the H100 is roughly at 850 square millimeters uh, square and this is actually in my opinion a very very large uh, piece of uh, yeah hardware I mean we are really hitting the let's say upper end of the manufacturing capability so 850 millimeter square is extremely large they they probably can go a few millimeters bigger but probably not that much more now AMD on the other hand uh, due to their chiplet design so basically as Intel so famously said uh, back in 2017 I believe that they are gluing together many smaller chips together to get a much larger chip and there's a uh, different uh, good and bad uh, positive and negative sides to that but uh, yeah so that's the main difference Nvidia goes to, for one main unit uh, of chip at 850 square millimeters and AMD has um, smaller chips that are 115 square millimeters so much smaller but instead they connect these uh, eight of these together to get the big MI300 compute the chip and this is actually where we start to yeah hit the interesting side of this comparison so these numbers you'll see here is actually the amount of estimated good wafers per um, uh, yeah per uh, uh, sorry good dice per wafer and uh, again these are estimates so I'm not an expert in this area but I'm trying to set together uh, from uh, the data I found that I think the number of 34 good dice for H100 per wafer is quite good I guess at least we're reading from the industry insider Dylan Patel he thinks that 40 is too much so I assume somewhere around 34 and I arrived at this number of 553 of uh, MI300 small dice which together if you take 8 of, uh, divided by 8 again you remember there were 8 of those smaller 115 square millimeters together you will get somewhere just below 70 and I arrived at these numbers simply using uh, this web page here I, I sign yeah so anyways uh, I just assumed uh, basically a square design for the H100 here at 28 times 29 uh, millimeters and then uh, I assume the defect density I try to find good numbers and here actually I'm giving Nvidia the benefit of the doubt so I'm assuming at quite low defect density at 0 0.07 for a let's say a quite new 4 nanometer process which possibly could have bigger defect density but anyways this is the assumption at 0 0.0.7 0 .0 and given the die size as again 20, 28 times 29 millimeters we got just below 60% of yield which is not great and this is basically yeah of our possible 58 good dice we are getting uh, yeah 34 uh, uh, good dice basically now if we do the same calculation for AMD and MI300 this is very interesting so according to again Dylan Patel we can see here that uh, the compute die for AMD MI300 is roughly at 115 square millimeters and again I did the same calculation so I assume that these chips are basically in a square form this could differ obviously I don't have the numbers of course but uh, let's have this assumption just for the sake of the calculations and then um, if you take these two numbers here you would basically get the 10.7 times 10.7 you would get probably 115 or ish give or take and then yeah I guess uh, I assume slightly better defect density over quite a lot better defect density and uh, um, yeah we, we will get our yield at 95 percent so here's uh, actually the interesting fact that out of those 581 possible dice we get something like 550 553 good dice so there's the difference you see here between 34 good h100 dice and 553 good mi300 dice now remember that again the MI300 is cons uh, consists of 8 of these so every 8 of these makes one MI300 chip and that is actually so the 69 number you'll see here is the actual real amount of MI300 units so yeah now you know how I arrived at those numbers so again going back here you can see that in the summer of 2023 Nvidia would have 4000 wafer allocation times 34 good dice and we will arrive at yeah let's say um, yeah I don't know 136,000 units of course these numbers are not exact but I'm just trying to get 
somewhere in a rough ball ballpark of the numbers we assume. For AMD, this is an non-existent basically. 50 wafers is nothing. It's just for yeah, show off and uh, showing the customers the if the the MI300 is actually working or not. And then you can see that uh, Nvidia will increase uh, quite a lot to 6,000 by end of this year. And this is based on the increased demand and increased uh, TSMC capacity as well, which has been quite widely known in the in the semiconductor uh, market. And we'll see that the H100 now goes above 200,000 units. And remember, these numbers are based on monthly numbers. So as you can see, I put here VPM stands for wafers per month. So these are basically 200 or 136,000. H100 and then 200,000 roughly by end of this year and then based on the same assumption we would see another doubling roughly let's say to 400 units by end of 2024 now of course these numbers could be completely basically non-correct and I think like probably the numbers of 2024 might be quite a bit off maybe let's say uh, I don't know even 50% off I don't know but again it's just for the sake of the calculation now, if we do the same thing for AMD and MI300, 2023 summer, nothing basically, which we saw in the earnings report. I think if you can see here that, uh, yeah, the data center revenue for AMD actually came in lower than even uh, Q2 last year. So, yeah, we simply don't have any, any big numbers right now. And this is actually quite correct with uh, what uh, AMD said at the earnings report that... Uh, the volume launch of MI300 will be like in six months, maybe even nine months, I would say. So closer to summer next year. Now, um, by end of this year, if we are assuming that they are having like 1200 wafers per month, then things start to get really interesting because now we have like something like 80,000 MI300s. So this is very good. This is really, really good numbers. I mean, for a company like AMD, with their position in the market, which right now has basically non-existent presence in terms of market share. This is insanely good in my opinion, if that's, that ends up in the actual number. And then by end of next year, let's say we have another 4,500 wafers, which is like, in my opinion, a three to one ratio compared to wafers that Nvidia gets. Again, Nvidia is the dominating partner, but uh, I guess AMD will take some market share. So yeah, my assumption is that there's a three to one ratio between them end of 2024. And here we can actually see the fruits of the chiplet technology from AMD. So despite having like uh, three, uh, three times less wafers, and you have to remember AMD are using cheaper wafers, like they are choosing five and uh, six nanometer products that are yeah cheaper to choose. Whereas Nvidia is basing on four nanometer, which is more expensive. So not only are they using less uh, wafers in number of units, they are also cheaper. But then again, so we can see that due to that, they get so many more good uh, uh, yields, basically, good dyes per wafer. We see that the difference is actually not that big if these uh, assumptions are correct. So now we have like 400,000 H100s end of next year, and then we have possibly 300,000 MI300s. And then if you look at those numbers and translate them to revenue, I assume that Nvidia will have a higher price. And some some people actually say that this is wrong because on paper, uh, MI300 should be the better chip compared to H100 at least. We will see about the Grace Hopper 200 super chip, but compared to H100, I'm quite convinced that the AMD have a good position. But anyways, just to be conservative, we can see that I'm assuming 20,000 units, uh, sorry, 20,000 US dollar per uh, per unit for M uh, Nvidia and 15,000 for AMD. So again, the numbers for AMD in the summer of this year is not quite a lot, but then look at uh, Nvidia's numbers already, 2.7 billion per month revenue. And this is like high margin revenue. And yeah, I mean, in my opinion, this is like really good. And you can actually see that Look at the latest earnings from Nvidia just a couple of days ago, and you can see that I mean, this is just this is just insane. Look at the jump from like previous data data center uh, revenues, and look at this uh, latest quarter. So probably these numbers are uh, not completely off. I don't know to be honest. I don't know if this is like one and a half billion or three and a half billion, 
but yeah, let's say two and a half or 2.7 billion US dollar monthly revenue income. And if the assumption is uh, correct that uh, we have 11,000 wafers by end of this year, that number will rise up to 4 billion and then 8 billion next year. These are assuming same uh, constant price of 20,000 US dollar per H100 chip. Now, the good part for AMD is actually start to be seen like again by end of next year and also to some degree end of this year because uh, you can see that we go from like something like 50 million to 1.2 billion to 4.6 or 7 billion by end of next year per month for AMD for a company that had a revenue of 23 or let's say 24 billion US dollar last year if these assumptions are correct we could possibly see like close to 4 billion or even 5 billion let's say even if you are conservative heck take take like 50% of and let's say we say that we have two and a half billion US dollar revenue end of next year monthly that's like uh, 30 billion extra revenue and this is a much much higher margin for AMD compared to the rest of their product so I wouldn't be surprised to see by end of let's say or let's say by mid 2025 if these numbers are correct we could possibly see like the AMD earnings per share increase like by a multiple that we have never seen before. I mean, maybe we could even see like a five to 10 X in terms of EPS if these numbers hold true. Maybe not 10 X, I guess, but I'm, I'm quite, I wouldn't be too surprised to see at least five X of uh, earnings per share based on these numbers. So yeah, uh, this is actually a very interesting uh, part of the market to follow. And we also know that the main difference between these two companies is actually that Nvidia is already so richly valued in terms of market cap. I mean, they are now $1.2 trillion company. AMD is $170 billion company. So if these numbers are, if you look at them, like, I mean, sure, Nvidia is still dominating, but if this holds up to be true, the difference uh, is not that much. I mean, even if M Nvidia has higher margin, Maybe they make like three times more money after tax based on their uh, AI development compared to AMD. But if you look at the market share difference between the companies right now, I mean, it's much more than three times. It's probably six, seven times. Uh, and before you know it, maybe by the end of this year, it's even 10 times. So I think if you're patient, uh, you could probably be better off to look at AMD as a possible um, safe haven for your uh, hard earned money but yeah so that was my more detailed look into this uh, all AI uh, H100 and my 300 discussions so please stay, thank you for watching and uh, yeah uh, put a like and a comment if you think there's anything I, I can do better and see you in the next one